Today we're going to talk about how to use grids and the basics of using grids for layout design so that you're not one of those designers. And that's going to start right now. This is about the combination of creativity and business. This isn't an aesthetic decision, this is a business decision. Grid systems are a really important part of layout design. And if you're a young designer or a new designer, understanding how you can use grids in your layouts is gonna help you create more dynamic layout designs. So today I wanna walk through what is a grid? How do you use a grid? And that way you can start to understand a little bit about these fundamental design tools. Now, whenever I'm doing a layout design, I highly recommend getting all of your information that you need to out to the side. Just put in all of the type, all the images, the logos, whatever is going to be put onto this layout design. Get it in your Illustrator file. That way, you know what pieces of the puzzle you need to put onto that page to make a dynamic layout. Okay, let's get started in just kind of playing with this puzzle. So first of all, I want to just start with this blank canvas. Like there's no grid here, it's just paper, right? And we've got some information out to the side where we've got a headline, uh, maybe a picture, some body copy, lots of body copy here, probably not gonna use all of that. Uh, and then we've got some like mouse type, some metadata, like website, author name, date. Uh, maybe this could be like a logo or something like that. So if we were gonna start laying this out, this seems like a really daunting task. Like what would we do to lay this out? Maybe, you know, we take a title and we move the title over here and you know, that's maybe a little too big. So let's shrink it down a little bit. And we've got this image, like what are we going to do with this image, right? Um, we can maybe make that something like that. Here's our little mouse type. I don't know, put that underneath the headline. And then move all of our body copy in, kind of shrink that down. We don't need all that body copy. You know, this is maybe something that we could do if we were going to create a layout with no grid. You know, we didn't know anything about the grid. We were just kind of throwing information on the page. So now that we've seen kind of what people usually do without a grid, how do we use a grid? Like what is a grid? Well, simply put, a grid is just a line or an anchor for your elements, your design elements, those things that we put off to the side that we all have to get onto the page. A grid is a anchor line or a highway for those elements to be connected. So what you need to understand about a grid is simply that it's like a connecting line between two different pieces of information. And when we put two different pieces of information on that connecting line, we actually build a relationship by connecting those pieces. So is there a certain type of grid out there? Well, there are some different grids, but here's the real secret. There's no such thing as a right or wrong grid. That's right, anything can be a grid system for layout design. I'll show you what I mean. So here we've got just a blank page. If I drag a line out, we now have a guide. This is a one guide grid. It's just a one anchor grid. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's bring out a second and a third from the top there. And now we have kind of three anchor lines, three guides that are forming a grid on this piece of paper. So we can drag this image over and connect it on those grid lines to make something a little more interesting. And then we're gonna drag out this headline. And again, what's important to understand is that we are anchoring different elements, different pieces of our design to these grid lines that we've created. Now what that does is it creates a relationship between the different elements. So here we have our body copy. Again, we're just gonna drag this out and we've got everything on one grid axis, that grid going vertical along the paper. Now what this does for us is it makes the information related. We've kind of built a rule of thirds grid here where the axis of the grid is in that third quadrant of the page. And if you don't know what the rule of thirds is, definitely go check that out because it's really aesthetic and it's built on the golden ratio, blah, 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 blah. Really important to understand for design. But thirds look really nice. So we've got this kind of like thirds grid. We've brought our elements onto the piece of paper and we've anchored them to those grid lines. 
So if you look at these two side by side, remember the first one, we just didn't have a grid, we just kind of like threw everything on the page, and actually I naturally formed a grid on the right hand side, but on the new design, we have a simple three line, three guide grid, and it looks a little bit more visually interesting because we used those boxes that the grid created to put our content into. Okay, so now you're starting to understand grids. You're understanding that these lines become the anchors for our content, that the boxes the grid creates become the containers for our content, and using containers that are on the same plane or on the same grid line creates a relationship that makes the design more visually interesting. So let me show you what we can do with more complex grids and we'll just kind of really quickly look at some different layouts on different types of grids. Now remember, there's no such thing as a right or wrong grid. You just have grids. Now for the purposes of this video, I've already pre-built a few grids um, that I thought looked kind of interesting and we're going to use those to lay our content out. But if you are a new designer, you can find grid examples online that you can use um, or you can just build your own. But I don't recommend building your own until you understand the fundamentals of grid layout by using some pre-made grids. And that way you can start to understand what looks visually aesthetic and what does not. Now as you become a more advanced designer, grid systems actually become part of your like subconscious where you always end up laying out stuff on grids without even knowing that you're doing it. So most of the time when I create a layout design, I don't use a grid system because I just do it naturally. But if you aren't there yet and you kind of struggle with grid systems or this idea of grid systems, find some online and start using them to kind of help yourself understand how to use them better. Now let's look at these examples. So here we have just a basic two column grid. There's two main columns for content and then kind of a margin around the side. You can see those two columns there and you have a gutter in the middle. That's a spot where you don't want to put content. Now if we drag our image onto the canvas, uh, maybe if this is a header image, we want it to be really big. So we can actually break the plane of one grid and use this both boxes in those columns to create a bigger focal point image. This is a main thing that we want people to see. But for this title, maybe we don't want it to be quite as emphatic. So we'll shrink that down and then we'll bring the uh, box over so it fits in one of those columns. Remember, this is a two column grid. Now, if we bring the body copy over, uh, let's go ahead and fit this body copy. Whoa, let's uh, go ahead and fit this body copy onto the plane there. And we'll just drag out a second piece of body copy and kind of make that uh, along the, the column. Now this is a really simple two column grid layout and you actually see this exact layout used in newspapers a lot because it's really easy if you have a lot of type, if you have a, an article um, or you're doing a design for a magazine, using a simple column grid is a really easy way to create a nice aesthetic layout that's really easy to read and look at while maintaining all of the content, getting all that content onto the page that you need. Here's another example of using the exact same two column grid, but a little bit different layout. This is kind of a traditional newspaper layout that you might see on a newspaper uh, if you still read newspapers. Now we use that really simple two column grid, but what makes grids more interesting is when we start to add more elements to them. So here is a two column grid, but it's got another break uh, in that column section. So we've actually taken those two columns and we broke them a couple t places vertically to create a little bit more of an interesting grid. So because we have more grid lines, we have more places that we can put the content and we can break up the content in different ways. So here maybe we have a really big headline in one column, we put the body copy in the other, and then we use maybe those small content boxes for a split image of some sort to kind of like break that image up into something that's a little bit more visually interesting. Now of course you can't do this with everything but sometimes it can produce a really cool and unique layout. So here's an example of how we used that grid. Now here we have a three column grid but we've added a lot of horizontal lines so we've broken this grid into a lot of different boxes. 
I wanted to show you this one because I wanted to show you that you can actually add a lot of different lines to build a very large grid and you don't have to use every box, right, individually. You can actually break the grid a little bit by, by extending over multiple boxes or you can leave boxes completely blank. It's all about anchoring your elements to these intersections, to these highways that the grid is creating. And if you think that grid is just like way too complicated and you're like, ah, wow, I don't know how I could ever use a grid like that, check out this grid. This one is like super complicated, lots of different lines, but the more complex these grids become, the more interesting and the more dynamic we can make our layouts. Now with this grid layout, I want to showcase something really interesting. See, if you struggle to use shapes in your design work, using a grid system can be a really easy way to start implementing shapes into your designs. You can actually use the shapes in the grid, using those grid boxes, to create dynamic layouts where they are connected on that highway, like we said, of the grid line. So here we're actually using a line to reinforce the grid, to reinforce that connection, that relationship between these design elements. Now one thing I don't like right here is that I broke the spacing evenly in these three mouse type uh, elements. So I'm gonna actually take this bottom piece and I'm gonna move it up here so it's relationally connected on the horizontal grid line rather than on that vertical grid line. One thing you want to make sure you avoid when you're doing layout design is spacing your elements too evenly. Remember, our brain likes odd spacing. It likes threes, it likes fives, it likes things broken unevenly. It makes it more interesting. So if all of your spacing between your elements is exact or uh, in of the same ratio in size, that's actually going to create a boring layout. So you don't want to space things too evenly. Here's the final result of a really quick layout using that exact grid system and using some lines to reinforce those highways. Notice that we've got those lines anchoring to pieces of our content and we've left a lot of white space. This is something the grid is really going to help you with if you're new. If you're new to design, a lot of young designers struggle with adding enough white space. You want your eye to be able to breathe and flow around the design. So using a grid and then leaving those boxes empty is going to help you space your elements out and add enough white space to your design to make it easy on the eye to decipher. Now this is a really cool grid. I think this one's kind of fun to use. Uh, it's almost like a Fibonacci grid, which if you don't know what that is, you can go check that out too. Uh, it's kind of a ratio grid, kind of like the golden ratio. But what's cool about using the same grid multiple times is that you can actually create layouts that are harmonious. They feel like they're related, even though the layout is completely different. That's because the layout is still based on the same grid. So we can take these elements, we move them around, we rearrange them on the grid, and now we've created a different layout, but it still feels like it's connected relationally with that other layout. This is how we can create better magazine layouts, or if we're creating a front and back of a flyer, maybe we can use the same grid on both of those so that the design feels symbiotic. I hope this video helped you understand how you can use grids in your layout design and how you can become a more effective layout designer by learning to anchor your content to different types of grids. Again, if you enjoyed this content, please like and share and let me know in the comments what type of content you want to see me produce so that I know if these are the types of videos that you want me to keep making. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.